What's up, my people? How we doing today? Today, we will be learning a little bit about how Rome got big. All right, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Uh, you know, a lot of students uh, have asked me in the past, you know, we kind of go straight from learning about Rome being this republic to all of a sudden it got huge. And, you know, they're like, how did that happen? Well, I think simply put, you can really look at Rome's expansion going all the way back to these events known as the Punic Wars. Now, to understand the Punic Wars, you have to know, first of all, what in the world's going on. If you look at this background right here, looks like a lot of chaos, right? Uh, there's probably a lot of things that you see in here that you're kind of confused about. For example, uh, for the first time ever in this class, I feel like you are going to see things done a little bit differently than what we've been learning, on, uh, learning about a lot here. So like recently we've been looking, you know, into the early River Valley civilizations. We've been learning about Greece. We've been learning about some of the earlier religions that were monotheistic. We haven't really talked about things going on in Africa. Well, the group that Rome's going to be fighting today are going to be grouped from Africa. And look, y'all, it's my dog. He has made a guest appearance. Look at that. What's up? It's Jake. You smell terrible, dude, but we love you. That's right. You know, uh, there's no such uh, thing as too much love from your dog, right? Unconditional. He is in here learning history with you guys. All right? Maybe he knows a little something that, that uh, you guys can learn, but maybe we'll get him back in the video in a little while. But anyways, we haven't really been learning much about uh, Africa here recently. Um, so today we're going to kind of learn about a group in Africa that's really been dominating the Mediterranean Sea. And Jake's got to shake. All right, now he's up and he's sniffing the papers that I'm grading. All right. Jake, can't get on that, dude. Jake, uh, all right, you got to chill, all right? So anyways, let's talk about the two sides they're going to go down and fight. And so first of all, let's talk about Carthage, all right? Carthage, if you look, it says they were located in modern-day Tunisia. Now, some of y'all are like, where in the world is Tunisia, all right? I'll show you in a, on a map here in a second. Come here, Jake. Uh, so if... You know, you kind of want to know, uh, he, he's kind of all over the place. If you want to know where Tunisia's at, it's really in North Africa, all right, which is on the Mediterranean coast. Uh, I can show you a modern day map. I'll show you one from uh, ancient times in, in a minute. But here's the thing you got to understand. It was not the same as Rome. Their goals, though, were very similar. Uh, the driving force for, uh, for politics in Carthage was to have trade dominance. They wanted to basically run the entire Mediterranean Sea. And what you got to understand, too, is the soldiers that they're going to use in this war are not citizen soldiers, all right? They're just not. Uh, when we look at Rome, though, on the other hand, they're a republic located in Italy, right? Representative government, also an oligarchy. And what an oligarchy is, it's basically ruled by the wealthy. What was that, Jay? Hey, buddy, you got to sit down. All right. So, anyways, it was uh, an oligarchy, all right? Um... Most of the wealthy were the people making the decisions, and that's kind of going to be the driving force politics there. We, we've learned already. You had two social classes, Jake. You remember what they are? Can you tell the students? You've got to say plebeians and patricians. If you said it, you're right. All right. Um, Rome glorified the military. We said Carthage, they're all about trade, and Rome's going to get that way with time. But the main thing for them was expansion and, and the glorification of Rome. All right, to show that they were the dominant power on the rise. So it's all about the military. And unlike Carthage, Carthage was buying military leaders. Like if you look at this picture right here, notice none of them are really dressed the same, right? They're dressed differently. That is what a good example of what mercenary fighters are, right? It is a mashup, I guess you could say, of several different groups and nationalities. To be a Roman soldier, basically you were Roman, right? You lived in their republic or eventually their empire. You may have been taken over, but 
you know, you were Roman. And basically the people who served Rome were citizens. All right. So if you look at this map right here, we see the Roman Republic here on the Italian peninsula. If you can kind of follow my mouse right here. Uh, here's the city of Rome being circled uh, right on the coast there. Uh, and if you go down, this is like where modern day Tunisia is right here. The city of Carthage. Notice it's right on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. All right. So with that being said, Carthage, what do they really own? You know, looking at this map, kind of just take a look. Uh, I want to hear some things that y'all y'all think they might own um, looking at it. So if you just take a second, uh, some of y'all might say things like, well, look at, you know, the entire north section of Africa. This is Africa down here, right? Uh, this is all desert. I don't want you to think of like lines and stuff running around up here. Uh, you know, when you get on the coast, it's very pretty, but you start to get in here, it's, it's straight up desert. That's one of the world's largest deserts. That's the Sahara right there, right? Uh, notice they own some major islands and part of some major islands in the Mediterranean Sea. And then what modern day country is this here on the left? Uh, that is Spain. So look, they're expanding. This is in the year 264 BCE. So 264 years before the birth of Jesus. All right. And notice who else is on this map. Notice they're not very big, but you have smaller cultures in the area. And you also have some Greek colonies. So at this point, y'all, Greece is still a thing. Uh, it's kind of falling out of its era of glory, I guess you could say. Um, but anyways, uh, Alexander the Great is kind of conquering. So you know what's going on. And Greece will soon fall after he's done with his conquering. So this is around that same time, right? The funny thing is, at the same time, the Punic Wars are going okay. So what you need to realize, it's the Romans versus Carthage. All right, so you, what you should have right now is you should have like a note sheet uh, that, that I've given you guys that you're going to be able to use to help follow along. So if you got comments, questions, just speak up. Coach Cox will pause the video and we'll be glad to talk. All right. So anyways, let's get started. So check this out. Here's a similar map. Okay. Uh, notice, you know, Carthage is controlling all of North Africa, several, you know, major islands in the Mediterranean region and part of Spain. And really, you look at the Roman Republic and its allies and the groups that it's expanded to, you know, it's not that big. Now, I want y'all to check this out. Where's the one spot on this map where you think Rome and Carthage might run into each other? Let me say this. It is an island, all right? And y'all may not know the name of this island. It is on this map. It's actually this one right here called Sicily, all right? Sicily is really going to be the property that gets the Punic Wars started. So let's get started. First of all, who is Carthage? While Rome was developing its government, it faced challenges abroad. By this point, we have seen that Rome has conquered all of Italy. Yes, all of Italy, Rome has now taken over, spread its ideas of a republic, spread its ideas of entertainment, of certain values, religious views. All that is getting spread. And let me tell you guys, this is nowhere close to the pinnacle of what Rome is about to reach. It is about to be massive. It is going to be unreal how big Rome gets. All right. Uh, they, they faced a lot of challenges, but the biggest one they are facing is actually at this point to the south of them. It's Carthage. It's located in North Africa, and they were descendants of seafarers known as the Phoenicians. Now, in this class, you've probably heard us talk some about this group called the Phoenicians. They come up. We don't spend a lot of time on them. But one thing that they were really known for was their ability to navigate the sea. At this point, the sea that everyone's navigating was the Mediterranean Sea, right? Um, so they were traders. And one thing they were also doing is they were the masters of written communication. They actually created basically some early concepts for what we use today. Uh, many of y'all remember when you were young, uh, learning something called phonics, all right? They influenced our current alphabet. They took symbols and made sounds out of them. And that's kind of where we get some of our inspiration from for this. Um, and the Greeks used it. And hence, we have what we call the alphabet. Uh, anyways, there's all sorts of cool uh, info out there on them. But I'm not spending a lot of time talking about the Phoenicians. But uh, Carthage, though, they were uh, in North Africa, came from the Phoenicians, who were originally Middle Eastern traders who were on the water quite a bit. Uh, and they were the largest and richest city in the Western Mediterranean region. All right. So with that being said, uh, Rome and Carthage are both at their peaks. And basically, whoever wins this war is pretty much going to be the one that influences the future. 
that's not what they were thinking at this moment. But I would argue that if it wasn't for Rome winning these wars, uh, Latin would not have influenced languages like Spanish, uh, French, Italian, some parts of English, right? We, uh, we, we would not speak those languages. I would doubt very seriously that the United States would be a republic if the United States even existed. We would probably be doing something else. So with that being said, this war is going to have massive implications on the future of Europe, on the future of the world. Okay. So with that being said, let's talk about the first Punic Wars. The the way this kind of started, I've, I've done a lot of research on this. Uh, this is one of the first things, the first lessons I ever remember teaching. I was student teaching. So I've been learning about the Punic Wars now for, for years. I remember learning some about it in middle school, but this is kind of like one of the first lessons I ever taught about. And it's really funny when you look into it, how this war even starts. What it starts over is a group of ragtag men who are fighting over a, a city in Sicily. Now, if we go back a couple of things, notice who owns most of this island here in Sicily, right? Is it Carthage or Rome? Obviously, it's Carthage, right? Well, there's a city, and the name's escaping me right now, but... There's a city that's being fought over, and what happens is there's some Romans, some basically some Roman pirates who don't really claim to be Roman, don't really claim to be from Carthage, who are basically wanting to control a city, and they do. They control this coastal trading city, and what they do is they are worried about holding the city when they get there. So what they do is, even though they stole the city from Carthage, you know, they ask for Carthage's help. They say, hey, we have this city. We'd like to work out an agreement with you that if you help us keep the city, we'll, we'll help you. So Carthage comes in and helps this group of pirates hold the city. Well, the thing is, this group of pirates, they weren't from Carthage, right? Where did I say they were from? They were actually Romans. But here's the thing. When the Carthaginians came in and helped them, the people who were the pirates here did not like Carthage telling them what to do. So guess who they go ask for help now from? They go and ask the Roman government for help. So with that being said, basically the first Punic War is fought over this island right off the boot of Italy called Sicily. All right. So a war begins in the year 264 BCE known as the first Punic War. All right. And it begins when Rome sends troops to Sicily to prevent Carthage from controlling the entire island. Because Carthage is now, they had a city on this, right? Uh, if you look, they controlled a lot of it. Well, what it comes down to is Rome comes in to support these pirates. So now Roman forces and Carthaginian forces are fighting it out between a third party, right? Uh, neither of these groups really cared what was going on at first. And now they are both caught in a battle over expansion. Who's going to be bigger? Who's going to control more, right? And Rome, think about it. If, if Carthage takes Sicily, look how close they are to taking over Rome, guys. I mean, you can look back at that first map we looked at. Who's bigger right now? Carthage or Rome? Something to think about, okay? So that being said, Rome, when this war breaks out, they had a slight disadvantage. Rome for a few uh, hundred centuries had been so good at fighting on land, but they had never really fought on water. They've never expanded, you know, through water necessarily. I mean, you can see on this small map right here, there's a few small islands, but they've never really had to do that much to take control of anything. So with that being said, Carthage came from a group known as the Phoenicians who were dominant seafaring traders, right? Um, so they had a major advantage fighting on water. Now, with that being said, the, the story goes kind of like this. Rome didn't know how to build a boat. They had no idea. All these boats and stuff people were using to go and conquer the sea. Rome had no idea what was going on. Rome didn't know how to do it. So the story goes, guess what Rome actually did, y'all? It's what some of y'all do in school. Shame on y'all. They copied someone else's work. Yeah, they copied somebody else's work. So with that being said, guess whose work they copied? Story goes that one day the Romans, wanting to build a ship, started digging into the waters and a ship started floating up to the shores of Rome, which actually came from Carthage. Yes. So with that being said, Rome's first naval ships 
that they used during this war were basically the exact same as Carthage's. All right, now with that being said, to try to take down this strong empire, Rome creates a navy using Carthage's basically boats. They created their own using the same type of model. The war drags on for 20 years, and Rome eventually, using their newfound naval skills, using their ability to fight on land, crushes Carthage's navy. Now, here's the result. Rome wins. Rome gets that dub. All they do is win, right? Carthage is now forced to leave Sicily and pay reparations. Now, this is a word, reparations, right here, that y'all probably need to stay familiar with. Reparations basically means that you have to pay for everything you destroyed when you lose a war. This word is not going to go away in your history classes. It's going to continue to show up uh, this year. It's going to continue to show up in your ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade. All right, that word you need to know, reparations. Notice the root word here is actually repair. You throw an I in there, R-E-P-A-I-R, repair. That's an easy way to remember it. You pay to repair what you tore up during a war, all right? So with that being said, Carthage owes a lot of money to Rome now, okay? Here's a picture of what some of those boats look like, by the way. Anyways, Carthage has to pay money. Now, notice, before the First Punic War, here's what things looked like. You had Rome, you had Carthage. Check out afterwards, all right? What really changed? If you'll notice, Rome has now found a way to control some of these islands like Sicily and Corsica. All right. So with that being said, Rome is slowly expanding, but the war don't stop there because what does Carthage all owe to Rome? Reparations. All right. So with that being said, if you fast forward, you know, uh, you know, several years, Rome is slowly expanding. OK, this is like 40 years into the future. Uh, a little over that. And Rome is slowly gaining territories. Now, I'm sure Rome would have been content with this, but Carthage was owing Rome money. Now, with that being said, they didn't have the money. After the First Punic War, Carthage had to pay reparations to Rome for tearing stuff up. To help pay Rome, and we remember mercenaries. What's a mercenary? Mercenary is a soldier who is paid. They may not typically be from that country or that civilization, right? They are paid soldiers. And remember, Carthage was paying reparations to Rome. So guess what? Carthage didn't have money to give to who? They didn't have money to give to these mercenaries, all right? So Carthage is kind of in a pickle, okay? So to help pay Rome and the mercenaries, Carthage launched an invasion into Spain. They wanted to expand, all right? They wanted to expand. Rome became upset and they tried to convince people of Spain to fight back. But what ends up happening is Carthage begins to expand. Rome is beginning to expand, right, as we just saw. Now there's a problem. Rome feels threatened again. Do you think Carthage is going to try to sneak up and take Rome head on again, try to come through Sicily? They don't want to do something so obvious, right? So they got to find an alternate route. So with that being said, Carthage is going to send its greatest general, Hannibal Barca, to attack Rome in the year 218 BCE, beginning the Second Punic Wars. Now check this out. Hannibal this time said, we're not taking the fight to any islands. That's, that's pointless, right? We're not going to do that. What we're going to do instead is we are actually, hey Jake, we are going to take the war right into the heart of Rome by doing something that no man has ever done before. Hey, look, Jake, you want to be on video? Say, hey. Hey, buddy. All right, you got to get down. All right. I got two students. That's right. You can meet them one day, maybe. Who knows? So anyways, uh, Hannibal's strategy was to take the fighting into Italy. And why he actually planned, bless you, buddy, uh, was to uh, take the fighting up through Spain, through modern day France, Gaul at the time, right? And go right into Rome by crossing the Alps. So Hannibal gathered 46,000 men, many horses. And check this out. Nearly 40 elephants. Yes, those are elephants, guys. Um, so the Alps, guys, it's no daunting task. I'll show you a picture here in a second of, of, of the Alps. But he loses a lot of his army to cold and hunger. But they were still very successful. So here's what that might look like. The Alps. Notice, what's the terrain look like, guys? And let me tell you, this looks like a warm time of the year. Because this traditionally, guys, would be covered in ice and in snow. 
Um, it's very treacherous, very rocky. Here's a great artist's, artist's uh, I guess, uh, rendition of the story. Uh, it looks like elephants falling off the side of cliffs, right? Soldiers maybe even being trampled. Uh, this is not somewhere where you want to go, but Hannibal did this. And this, guys, is a big reason why Rome, these, these Alps, why Rome is not going to have a lot of people from the north attack them. All right? Come here, buddy. Get down. Thanks, bud. All right. So in the year 216 BCE, Carthage continues its success at the Battle of Cana. So check out how far they get. Cana, guys, is actually... Hey, bud. Is actually where this happy face is on there. Hey, you want to talk to the people? Here. Come here. Come here. Hey, up here, dude. Hop up here. Sorry. My dog just wants to learn. He likes history, too. So, anyways, with that being said, Jake, you got anything to say? You want to show him a trick? Can you speak? Speak. 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 Uh, he's trying. He's trying. All right, so anyways, uh, in the year 216, Carthage continues its success, like we said. It crosses the Alps, and look how far it gets, guys. It pushes Roman forces all the way down to the hill of the boot of Italy at Cana. The Battle of Cana, Carthage had nearly lost half of his men. The, the general here, Hannibal Barca, all right, this guy right here, had lost half his men. So they're into the 20,000, and Rome... This is their home turf, all right? But they're going to have lots of success in pushing forward. So if we continue what happens in the Second Punic War, Rome is scared to death. And in order to keep Carthage from winning, Rome rebuilt their force and chose a man named Scipio, all right? Scipio. What ends up happening is Rome has an option here. They say, look, we can either fight Carthage head on or we can, hey bud, we can abandon Rome and go take the fighting into Carthage. All right, remember, Carthage has invaded this whole territory. Rome decides to, you know what, let's take some of our troops and go attack Carthage. So all these troops who are now fighting in Italy against the Romans, right, buddy, you got to chill. You're being so loud. I know you probably want to eat some food or like, I don't know, watch some TV, but you got to learn some history first. All right. So with that being said, all right, these people who fight for Carthage are now thinking my wife is in Carthage, right? My kids are in Carthage. So Jake, buddy, buddy. All right, guys, we're back. So anyways, I had to, talk to him. Give him a little pep talk. All right. Anyways, so the Roman response, in order to keep Carthage from winning, they rebuild their force and they chose a man named Scipio not to fight in Rome, but attack the city of Carthage head on, head on. So, I mean, there's people that are from Carthage, these mercenaries that are thinking, hey, my wife and kids are in that area and might die. So Hannibal, who's waging a war in Italy, had no choice but to return home and defend his people. And at the Battle of Zama, Scipio Africanus, all right, Scipio defeats Carthage. So the result of this, right? Rome wins and Carthage had to agree to give up its powerful navy. So now it basically has the one thing it's supposed to be good at. The one thing that Carthage uh, focuses on more than anything, its navy and its trade, they have to give that up now and pay reparations. And the first reason why Carthage was invading Spain and into Europe anyways is because they didn't have what? It was money, right? It was a money issue. So they went and tried to get more money, and now they have lost it, and they have to pay more money again. So this is not looking good for Carthage, all right? So Carthage is now in more debt, all right? And Scipio is going to go down in history as this Roman. <laughs> Jake, come on, dude. Come on, dude. Anyways, uh, Scipio is going to earn the nickname Scipio Africanus because he put a whooping on Carthage, on their home turf. He went into Africa and defeated them on their home ground. But this is the one that kind of goes down in history as, oh man, you know, Hannibal crossing the Alps, crossing over with 46,000 men over insane terrain, right? You know, there's a lot of people who hike the Alps all the time that 
you know, don't make it. It's, it's not an easy hike. Uh, and he's doing it with soldiers and elephants. And it was just an impressive feat. And then you talk about the strategy from the Romans to leave their home, to leave it defenseless and go attack Carthage. I mean, that's iconic right there, right? That's pretty iconic. So with that being said, Jake, you're trying to get my lap, buddy. Uh, anyways, so with all that being said, this is not the final war, guys. It's not the final war. If I can get this thing to advance, that'd be amazing. What happened? There we go. All right. So if we look after this, check out what happens. Rome simply takes control of Spanish land. <laughs> Jake, come here. There we go. You talk too much. All right. So with all that being said, here's post First Punic War, right? Come here. So anyways, post First Punic War, right? Rome took control of these islands. Now Rome is starting to expand. Aren't you seeing now how Rome got so big? This is where a lot of it begins. And the Third Punic War, this is where it gets kind of ugly. Okay, the Third Punic War. Carth Carthage is no longer a threat, but it will still remain a trading center. Just check out where it's at, guys. It's on the southern portion of the Mediterranean Sea at the north of Africa. So with that being said, in the year 146 uh, BCE, Roman soldiers are going to invade Carthage and burn it to the ground. If you go to the city of Carthage today, it's not the best place, okay? Uh, we've learned about things like men like Alexander the Great, things he had done to people who dare oppose him, uh, places like Thebes, you know, Tyre. Uh, and you go there today, the ruins are kind of gone. Now, if you go to Carthage, it's kind of the same boat because what the Romans did, they wanted to make sure Carthage, even though it's still large, was never a threat to them ever again. So with that being said, they burn Carthage to the ground and they enslave 50,000 men, women, and children. Men, women, and children. Didn't matter. They became a slave. And also, they do this. Some of y'all, I know, have messed with salt before. Yes, salt. Now, salt, what you got to realize, salt does something to moisture. Have you ever put salt on a slug before? I did it when I was a kid. What happens? Yeah, so when you pour that salt on that slug, all that water in him comes out, and that thing is literally just the skin of that slug, right? Same thing happens when you put salt on the ground. Roman troops spread salt in the ground to make sure crops never grew, because what's in the soil, guys? Moisture. What makes crops grow? moisture. So with all that being said, this salt ends up basically wrecking Carthage to where they can never grow anything again. It's almost impossible to live there. And soon after Carthage is destroyed, Rome rebuilds parts of it and they make it Roman territory. So as a result of the Third Punic War, all right, Carthage becomes a part of Rome. Here's some dank memes, all right? Uh, when Carthage hates you so much, you just got to sprinkle that salt. Right, Jake? Come here and say hey to, hey to my students. He thinks he's a lap dog. You're not a lap dog. You're too big, all right? So with that being said, um, Rome has really expanded. Uh, here's what it looked like before the Third Punic War, after the Third Punic War, all right? So really... If you look at this area, we, we talked early on, there was really no threats to Rome other than Carthage, right? I mean, you have some Greek colonies. You have Alexander the Great who was conquering literally, uh, you know, the uh, Middle East, right? Egypt. Um, but a lot of that's starting to fall apart because, you know, he died in what, 323 BC? So with all that being said, really it's Rome and Carthage that are looking for control of this area. Okay, so with all that being said, you're okay, buddy. All right, so Rome has really, really grown. Okay, now the results of the Punic Wars. Rome wins all three wars. There were three wars, and that's it. Rome, Rome won all of them. The first one was over Sicily, right? The second one was trying to protect Rome because remember, Carthage came through Spain, 
over the Alps and into Rome. And then, hey, you must need to go outside. You need to go outside, buddy. One sec. All right, sorry about that. I think the dog had to use the bathroom. So anyways, with that being said, uh, Carthage is really no longer a threat. Uh, first Punic War, you had them fighting over Sicily, right, because of some pirates that were needing help from Carthage, and then they didn't like Carthage, so then they called for Rome to help them. It's kind of comical, honestly, the, the story. And then you have Carthage invading Rome over the Alps, then Rome takes it back to Carthage. And then the third one, it was just kind of like a LOL. Let's go out and just wreck Carthage because we can. All right. So with that being said, you'll see with time, Rome literally takes control of the entire Mediterranean. If you fast forward to about 100 years after the birth of Christ, this is what Rome's going to become, where it's pink is basically what they gained control of during the Punic Wars. All right. If you look at the green, that's what they are going to build alliances with and control later. So I just want you to see, I like this map a lot because it shows you exactly how big Rome's going to get. And look what they have entire control of eventually. Literally, they took control of what they thought was the entire world. The Mediterranean Sea. All right. Rome gains control of most of it and eventually taking control of all of it to the point where they no longer called it the Mediterranean. It became known as Mer Nostrum, all right, which is Latin for our sea. If you wanted to ever take a boat onto the Mediterranean, you had to go through Roman ports. If you wanted to trade on the Mediterranean Sea, you had to pay Roman taxes. Do you see exactly how powerful Rome is about to become. Do you see how much money they are going to make off of this? Do you see how much they are going to use their influence to spread their culture, their language, their political views, their religious views? This is going to make Rome take off. You cannot talk about Rome without learning about what the Punic Wars did. They eliminated a huge threat, all right? A huge threat that nearly put them on their knees and cut their throats and said, y'all are done. We could be speaking the languages that are based off of things that the people of Carthage would have spoken. We could be doing Carthaginian things, but no, the Punic Wars are the reason why Rome survived and why Rome conquers the world eventually, or at least what they thought was the world. Okay, so with that being said, you need to understand what the Punic Wars were, okay? It is a very big monumental turn in world history. It is a very big turn in, uh, I would say, the history of mankind as a whole, in the history of Western civilization, African civilization, Middle Eastern civilization, it plays a huge role. Okay, um, it's the exact reason why you know during the life of Jesus that he will be killed by Romans, right? He'll be ki killed by his own people, but also Romans. I mean, so think about what that does to a religion, the biggest religion in the world, right? Um, so this is a very pivotal point, I think, in Roman history and world history as a whole. Uh, hopefully this video lecture was beneficial to you. My throat's just a little scratchy. That's kind of why I'm making this. I don't want my voice to be exhausted. Um, and I'm not able to speak and power through the rest of school week. So I decided to make this instead. Hope it's beneficial. If you have any questions, I'll pause the video at some point. Uh, but thanks for, uh, being awesome guys. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Y'all rock. All right. Y'all rock. And I will see y'all on the flippity flippity flip.